The universe never stops evolving and surprising us, and our quest to understand it never stops either. The next heavy hitter telescope from NASA will be the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, launching by the end of the 2020s. Its main scientific goal is to try to understand the basic nature of dark energy, the mysterious component of the universe that is accelerating the expansion of space itself. Roman, once it's completed, will be an infrared telescope just like JWST, although the wavelength range it can see isn't as broad as Webb's. Roman will have about the same resolution as Hubble, although it will be able to see about a hundred times more of the sky than Hubble during each observation. Also, compared to the famous $10 billion price tag on Webb, Roman comes in at the bargain price of only about $4.3 billion, and that's the prediction for the entire life cycle of its development. It's also being built from a spare mirror off of a spy satellite, and if you want to learn more about that story and some cool more details about Roman too, check out my other video on the telescope up here or in the description. While Roman will be tasked with some exoplanet imaging and surveying, the real question that it wants to answer is what the heck is dark energy? We believe that about 70% of all of the energy in the universe is contained in this dark energy, and yet we have no idea what dark energy is, other than the fact that it causes the expansion of the universe to accelerate. The question for us then is how does staring into space tell us anything about dark energy anyway? Space generally looks pretty static anytime we look at it, so how can a telescope teach us about its evolution, past, present and future? Well, Roman will actually attack this question on three fronts, all using the incredibly wide field of view that Roman boasts. An important concept for all of the techniques is redshift which is the light emitted by distant objects losing energy to the expanding universe around it. Light can be pictured as a wave traveling through space, and hence all light has a wavelength. The shorter that wavelength is, the less energy that that light has. So for example, infrared light has a lot less energy than X-ray light. As the fabric of space that the light is traveling through expands, you can picture it literally stretching that wave, causing the wavelength to get longer and the light to lose energy. This probably is a bit of a simplification of the physics, but it's good enough for us here. Redshift is then just a number that tells us how much longer the wavelength has gotten since that light was emitted. And it tells us about how fast the object was moving when the light was emitted, and also how far away that object is. The further away the object is, the longer its light travels to reach us, and hence the more it's redshifted, because this effect accumulates over a longer period of time. Since the expansion of the universe is accelerating, we know that the further away an object is, the faster it's moving. So the redshift of an object tells us about dark energy. We can then use other methods to determine the distance of an object. Usually this means using the distance ladder. This is a variety of techniques like parallax, Cepheid variable stars and more, but I'll leave some links in the description about all of those. By then comparing the distance and redshift of an object like a galaxy, we can understand how the universe expanded while that galaxy's light traveled to us, and how that expansion has changed over time. Roman will map the positions and distances of millions of galaxies, teaching us how the distribution of galaxies has changed due to the evolving dark energy. The second approach uses supernovae, specifically type 1a supernovae, which occur when a white dwarf star reaches a specific mass and explodes completely destroying itself. We can think of these explosions as almost always being the exact same intrinsic brightness, but the further away a supernova is, the fainter it will look to us. This means that how bright they look is a really good way to measure how far away they are, since we know how bright they would look if they were right near us. If we also measure the redshifts of the supernova and compare it to their brightness, then the high redshift supernova always seem to be dimmer than we expect. This was actually how dark energy was discovered back in 1998. It told us that distant supernovae are moving away from us faster than they would be if the expansion of the universe was not accelerating. Roman will survey supernovae at greater distances than we've ever done before, allowing us to understand the evolution of dark energy further back into the universe's history. Thirdly, Roman will study the distribution of galaxies, where they lie in space, to study dark energy too. Thanks to the bizarre early universe, until about half a million years after the Big Bang, the universe was basically just a hot, dense, expanding fluid. Small fluctuations and over-densities produced sound waves that moved through this fluid, 
and thanks to the overdensities, galaxies were more likely to form in the ring shapes left by the so-called baryonic acoustic oscillations, or BAO. These waves, or BAO, can't be seen anymore, but the clustering of galaxies show us where they were, influencing the large-scale statistics of galaxy distributions. This then gives us another way to measure the distance to a galaxy, and by studying how these imprints change over cosmic distances and timescales, will allow us to study how dark energy has been subtly influencing the universe over time. By combining all of these techniques, Roman should give a way of studying dark energy in more detail and over a wider time frame than ever before. This will hopefully start to reveal to us the exact nature of what dark energy is and how it might evolve in the future, telling us the ultimate fate of the universe. And hey, even if all of that fails, even if we learn nothing new from this mission, at least we always have the satisfaction that naming it Dark Energy was a sweet way of tricking the US's Department of Energy into funding a load of astronomical research into it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!